Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today, we're traveling with fish. We're in a hotel room, we're at a fish convention, but it's really no different than if we were, well, we did travel cross country, but I've now bought fish, and now I gotta get them back to Seattle. So, some of the things I knew that I would need, I brought a tote, and I brought an air pump, I brought some test strips, I brought breather bags or fish bags, heat packs just in case, there's splitters, and why did I bring splitters? Because what if I buy a lot of fish? I'm going to need more totes. I brought more totes, but I packed all my clothes in this tote. And you can put this into a suitcase. A lot of people use sweater boxes and stuff like that. I like these Rubbermaid or Ziploc ones in particular because they have this spongy ring. So when you're traveling, like we're going to drive, this spongy ring right here. Uh, when we're driving, you can lock this down. And now water won't splash out. I'm not saying it's completely leak proof, but if you had to slam on the brakes, it'll be like, oh, drip, 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 as opposed to slosh, slosh. And so now we're here for two days, basically for the convention. And we've got to keep it hot. So unfortunately, anyone you're staying with is going to be uncomfortable because you crank the heat up in the room. And you can get a heater, but... So Jimmy was like, maybe we go buy a heater. Maybe, but what if I buy more fish? If we're doing more than one tote, now we're buying a bunch of heaters. That doesn't make a bunch of sense, but we stick to one. But I'm just going to get air stones going. And I already dechlorinated the water. I brought, you know, this is how many ounces? Four ounces. So you'd have to, if you're flying, you got to be three or less. But you can get a one ounce version of that. And you just put a little bit in there. This is just the tap water. And I test the tap water first to make sure it wasn't crazy. And then at the convention, uh, who I bought these from, Eric Bodrock, he already has them in the tap water here. So some vendors will bring all of their own water from home, travel here, some will bring just the fish and then use the water here. And uh, so luckily he's already using that water, it should be super easy. I did forget airline tubing though. And so I was in a pickle, luckily found Eric, he had some, and uh, we're gonna be able to use it. If not, worst case scenario, usually you can run to a PetSmart or a Petco locally, pick up some tubing, whatever you forget, the only thing I found you can't really get a hold of is fish bags sometimes. That can be pretty difficult. And if you don't bring containers, like let's say you're just like, I'm going to go to a fish convention or I'm moving and I didn't know I had enough stuff. Uh, a Home Depot, go buy buckets. That's the other, I've done buckets for dang sure. So now I've got two and I brought the dual outlet just because if I set up another one, which Jimmy's already talking about bringing home fish. <laughs> so if I set up another one, uh, we'll be good to go. Try not to go too crazy. Hopefully these will work right out of the pack and don't have to soak for 24 hours. But, we get one of these on here. Put one of those in. And I don't have any check valves or anything, but, you know, it's the hotel floor, not my floor. Get, that's the one. That one over here, we're gonna plug these in. Nice and safe right here. Perfect. And you just set it up for the weekend, you know. Yep, there's gonna be people showering here. That's why I brought a lid. You don't want anything dropping in there. But we've got air, a lot of surface area. These are L394. I got a group of six of these. Got them a great deal. So a lot of times, like on a website from Eric Bodrock, these might be, at this size, 60 bucks a piece or something like that. I want to say I got all of them for like, like 130, 120, something like that. And he just put them in the bag because I went downstairs. He's got them in totes just like this. He picked them out, and now I've got them. Long term, I'm hoping to spawn them. But we'll get those guys out in here. It was great you got them early because you got you the big ones. Yeah, so he's like, you, you know, you want to pick them out? You want the big ones? And I said, hey, you pick them out. You bred them. He'll do me better than I'll do myself. So, yeah, they're, you know, he fasted them since Monday. Today is Friday. And, uh, you know, if you were traveling around the country, you'd do the same thing. You would not feed your fish for quite a while. And uh, so these guys, we got a couple of caves at the Catfish Convention. I'm going to put a couple of caves in there. And then I'm going to add these as well. These are Nanochromis. Uh, Perulis? I don't know if I, 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 I wouldn't say I'm saying that correctly, but I can spell it. Because uh, I've never had to say it before. 
but we're going to get the pair of those in there and some caves and hope for the best. And then when we go to leave on Sunday, which checkout time takes a little longer when you got to pack fish, by the way. Just, just that's a heads up. Don't leave Sunday, uh, you know, thinking, oh yeah, I'll just we'll leave. Uh, but most likely I'll bag these, but maybe we have an inverter in the van. We could possibly just uh, run it that way anyway, so. But save all your bags, save everything. You never know what you're going to need by the end of the day. This is just a, you know, a small dwarf cichlid. It's kind of the closest thing I can tell you it's like is like a, like a Crebensis, really. An anachromis. Rubber bands plaguing my life. Save those rubber bands. You'll need them. Rubber bands. A female. Where'd the female go? Oh, did I leave it out on the bed? I think so. I might have left the female out on the bed. Mm, yep. Check this out. This was an impulse buy. This is a common placosmus or a sailfin, whatever you want to call it. It's a piggy bank. Let's see Look that at that thing. So sweet. Yeah. Now, because I'm driving, I bought one. If I had to pack it in luggage, I'd be afraid. But something like this doesn't come cheap. How, I, well, one, I've never seen one. I don't think I'll ever see one again. Yeah. And there was only three at this convention. It was 60 bucks, and I view that as money well spent. For sure. But we did get a cave. These are from plecocaves.com. They sponsor, well, you know, they kind of give one to everyone at the event. Hopefully they get, you know, publicity and they make some money. And this is what it looks like when you go to a fish convention. And you'll probably see footage of this in our vlog and stuff like that on Jimmy's channel or my channel. And I'm getting you bigger ones than smaller ones. There isn't much of it. Uh, it's for the soup. Every fish room is going to be like this, so much so that vendors set up to sell fish. Uh, the same way in the room if you're you know like let's say you bred these and this is all you had and you didn't want a whole table you sell out your room and usually the first night everyone goes from room to room to room and uh, buys fish and you never know what you're gonna find and it's not just like we're at a catfish convention these aren't catfish there's lots of rainbow fish Gary Lang's here all kinds of stuff so we're gonna get the other cave we got for free in here and maybe I'll pick up some more when I'm down there but for now I'm going to put a cover on this just very loosely so that if they jump, it's not just on the floor. Because there's nothing worse than spending a lot of money in talks all day, you come home and you're like, oh no, I just lost half my pair. And then you gotta scramble and hopefully get one from whoever you bought them from. So that's that. We've got, we're gonna manage them long term. I'm gonna make sure ammonia doesn't go up, that type of thing. Mostly it's, you know, you change a little bit of water every day to chlorinate and that type of stuff. You're not doing any feeding at all. Uh, so now, you know, we'll chime back in when we're more in the process, when I'm moving them to a van or I bought more stuff. For now, that is all the setup. I gotta crank the heat. Uh, we want these guys, I don't want them to be below 70, and so I'm thinking we gotta have the heat around 78 to 80 in here. So there's no, no bounds to what I'll do for fish. I'm literally turning the heat up, up to 80. Even though it's 93 degrees outside, I'm turning this up to 80 uh, because the air conditioning went on to get too cold, it's already going to be stressful. They're going to be at least in a tote or a bag for at least nine days at this point. So it, and they had to travel here, so nine days. If I can give them two days of heat, that's only seven days in a, in a van with us visiting houses. I can use some heat packs and you know we'll, we'll manage it based on every state we drive through. Today, if they were in the car, it was 95, so too hot. But two days ago, we were in Montana, 34 degrees. So we got to really manage it as we drive. Back in the bathroom. Bought more fish. At this point, I don't know what where the video maybe tied in, but these are the L397s. There's only, I think, at least Jules was saying, I'm the, I'll be like the third or maybe fourth person in the country to have them. And... Uh, you know, the two other people that have them are at the convention, so I can talk and nerd out with them. They don't look like much in this stressed out bag, but when you see the pictures online, they're really cool. You know, they are stressed out. But now I gotta prep more uh, water. So here's another container. We brought chips and snacks in it, you know, and you're thinking, what do you need a whole container of snacks? People are making fun of me as I walk up to the hotel room and I go, oh yeah, you mean these fish tanks? You know, so I had to pack stuff in them to justify bringing them. Now I gotta rinse them because they've never been rinsed from like the factory or the store. And so there's sometimes uh, chemicals and stuff that they use when they're casting them. So, you know, 
That's what you got a hotel bathroom for. We gotta go to the bathtub. We've got water. This is how you measure the chlorinator. The good thing about things like Prime and Ultimate, or at least stuff you use all the time, like Ultimate, you can dose at least 10 times the over the recommended amount. It's not harmful. And uh, I use Ultimate because it's got um, stress code or aloe vera in it, and fish are stressed out, that type of thing kind of warm here. We're going to float these guys for a little bit, get an air stone in there, but I use that because I'm used to it. You know, I wouldn't use one that I'm not used to. These guys, I want some air from sure. And we're a little bit warm. I might add some cooler water in there. But. We're going to get an air stone in here. Let's start to make sure that chlorine or at least we can mix up the, the water in here. Now, you're probably thinking like, you don't have caves in here or anything yet, Corey. Well, in bags they don't have caves. We keep them in the dark here in the, the bathroom so the light only comes on if someone's going to the bathroom. And when we transport them in the van, we won't be able to um, keep the caves in there either because as we make turns and we slow down and we speed up, those caves are gonna roll. And I could do, you know, like, uh, some square caves, but even they're gonna slide. In a perfect world, if I knew I was gonna buy all these plecos, I could have siliconed some down into it, but they don't need it e either. So, yeah, we're just, I'm gonna test the water inside one of the bags just to make sure, you know, we're not like, they're sitting on our water and I'm gonna drop them into, you know, this water is, I won't say liquid rock, but it's definitely high pH. And this is because we're not going to leave till tomorrow. We have to check out at you know probably 11 a.m. or something. And right now it's only like one o'clock. So yeah, the good thing is I think this water is going to be the same. Uh, looks like they've been bagged in the Madison, Wisconsin tap water here. And just to confirm, you know, when you got $400 in fish and you're because right now, so you're going, use the API test kit where it's liquid. Like, we have to go back for more talks. We got lunch to do. We got things we got to do. But it's going to be fairly similar. By the time this one colors up, we've got the same alkalinity, same hardness there, uh, you know, same nitrate in the bag. So we're going to be fine to basically, they're, they've been already bagged in this water. We might get pH to come up a little bit when it gasses off here. But I'm just going to go ahead and start releasing. They are a little warm, but I think they're I think they're gonna like being a little warm than a little cold. Let me feel these guys over here. It's not that far off. How do I? It's gonna take too long. I don't have a good way to get cold water in. Maybe a couple of just straight up cold will do it. I'm probably gonna turn the temp up a little more, Jimmy. <laughs> I think we're already 82 in here. This is a time when you don't want to see a lot of poop in the bag, knowing that they could be in this kind of an environment for the next uh, next eight days, seven days. And right now they don't look cool, but if you look this fish up, okay, they do look cool, but they don't look nearly as colorful as they're going to look, but they look really cool. I wish they had more, I would, I would buy more. Really hoping we can get something going with these guys. And again, we'll save all the bags just in case. You never know what you're going to need when it comes time to check out. And we're going to put a top on them because I would be devastated. Because there's only three, right? Like, this is one of those fish where if I kill them, I'm not importing them from Scotland again. Like, like that's probably just not going to happen. So if they don't make it, that's all on me. There's some other people when they get them to breed, I could probably get some if I had two and there were just two males or two girls and we could do some trading or something like that. But yeah, I'm just going to put that on and we're going to turn the light out and we're going to leave them and we'll come back later in the day and just hope we can take a look at these guys real quick. 
These guys have been here since yesterday. They're all kind of caved up. But you can see there's the uh, nanochromus in there. And really I put the caves in for the nanochromus so that they wouldn't fight. Uh, I just want the pair of them to uh, you know, kind of separate ways. So I'm going to turn the caves so they face differently. And yeah. So now I've got two different plecos to play with. Uh, that was my goal is I wanted to, that's why I bought these ones. I wanted some plecos to play with because I really enjoy breeding plecos. And uh, I think I actually have time to raise the fry. Where a lot of other fish, maybe I won't. So I think with my work schedule, filming and all that, we can still play with these. And they're, for me, a lot of, ins well, not ancestors, but plecos in general are relatively set up a really good environment, do the water changes, feed them right, they'll breed, which is nice. And then there's not a lot of like, once the eggs come out, you can rely on algae and live brine and all that. And I don't have to rely on. Oh, I gotta feed micron food 20 times a day, and then oh, I had to be out of town for three days. Like Gary Lang, for instance, he's here, and uh, you know if they lay eggs and and they hatch out, and no one's feeding them for three days while they're gone, they all die. So, and there's not really an auto feeder for that. You can use green water, but that's the schedule. That type of fish will does not work with what we're currently doing. These are so that's why I was willing to invest. So, lights out, lunchtime, more talks, more filming, and we'll get them out to you guys. So made the choice that we are going to move these fish inside of these containers because I have stops to make. So we're going to go see Lucas Brett's. I can plug these in at his house, uh, much like if you're going hotel to hotel. But after that, we're not really staying at anyone's house or anything, so then I might uh, bag them up. But for now, I'm going to do some water changes on it uh, just to you know, I guess, freshen up the water, if you will, because once I move the water from here, it will be different. So like when we arrive at L.R. Brett's house, he will have different water. It'll probably be okay, but if I've got the option to use the same exact water, why wouldn't I? And I would guess there's no nitrite or nitrate in the water, really, but pH, yeah, it's got lots of buffer, so it'll be fine. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to dump some water out and then scoop it back in slowly apparently because I can't think of a better way to do this in a perfect world. They'd have a, a python, but they don't have that, so. These guys look awesome. I really like them. And they haven't been fighting, so. Can't sex them yet though. Not till, not till I get the things on their tail. I like how wide their fins are. I like their, their eyes. Hey, yeah. boing. But I'm going to dump some water out. Hopefully they don't dump out. So now, I get some right temp water going. Put a little bit of the chlorinator and it's going to lock up any ammonia that's in there. And aloe vera because it looks like this one might have a little bit of bacterial infection going on. Nothing we're going to be able to do about that right now. I mean, they had to come in from Scotland. They've had a long journey, and they still have a long journey, so... Let me get this. Airstone will help make sure we gas off any chlorine and mix the water while I'm doing this. It's a slow process, but these are fish that I've never been able to buy, never showed up on a wholesale list. And uh, what you gotta do, you gotta drive across the country and then drive them back. I could try shipping them, but I don't know where they're gonna go. They'd have to go to my store. And I don't want a chance of losing them. I think this is safer. The trick is not to make it too heavy to carry. Something like that's probably about right. Because water's gonna slosh to be dry, that type of thing, so. Now I'm going to see, I don't think we have anything, but can you think of anything we can do to drill a hole? I can get a punch or something. I have a knife. Alright, let's use a knife. and Because uh, what's going to happen if we lock this down, no water will get out, but it's also going to pinch off the hose. So the ones that I move koi in and stuff, when I go buy koi from dealers, 
they already have that, and I forgot to do that before we left. So now we got to see what we can do it. So let's grab that knife. <laughs> I want the tube to kind of dangle in the middle here, not to be right at the edge, so that way it gets the best circulation I could in this container. Hopefully now I can... I'm doing this as safe as possible while knowing this is really not safe, what I'm doing. So let's see. There's the piece of plastic. Do we have like a pen or anything? Maybe a key? Have a key. I need something to push it in. I have some. Maybe not. There is, there's like a screwdriver in. This would have been a smarter thing to use, by the way, the cap. Guess we know that for next time. There, there we've got one ready to go. We can lock everything down. Now we just gotta do that on the other one and pack all this stuff up. Which is not my favorite part, but we will do it. So for now, I think I'm gonna put this on the floor to get it out of the way. So, changing water. It's another morning. Uh, basically, I took about one and a half of these pitchers out of each tote. We're putting them back in. Then we'll dechlorinate. Then we're back on the road again. And I think we're just going to stay with the this style. It's working out well so far. Uh, we did give them a piece of wood overnight so they could chew on, get some food into them in these plecos. Uh, we're changing that water out. And nothing, no actual food though. We didn't want to like spoil the water or foul it. Put a little bit of tannins in the water, but uh, you know, I figure one meal over the course of like 10 days or so is enough to help sustain them. They can easily go without eating, but um, I want to make sure they stay, you know, strong. So, more water. Alright, so we finally landed our destination. This might be your new house. This might be wherever you're going. It might be bringing fish back to your home from a convention. Uh, I'm going to actually acclimate them just a little bit while I figure out where all the fish are going to go. We picked up other fish. Uh, I think everything made it. At least it seemed like they were making it, you know, the whole way here. It looks like we still have the you know, other three of these guys. Water's still reasonably warm. I'm sure there's ammonia in there uh, at this point, but we're going to, uh, you know, acclimate just a little bit while I figure out where all the other fish are going to go. The other stuff we can move over and check real quick. I just wanted to make sure that my my pair was alive, everything's alive. And then we also picked up fish along the way from uh, some other places. So hopefully they're all doing well as, as well. Yep, Corydoras doing well. I'm gonna float that real quick, it'll warm up a little bit. The next one, more Corydoras doing just fine. Now these ones we didn't uh, put in the same container, but we picked them up much later. These were like these guys, these rainbow fish I picked up, which have laid eggs in the, there's eggs are fungus up, but they were laying eggs in the water on the way here. If you guys can see that, but at the bottom there, there's some eggs in there, but yeah, at least two of them. Um, they were only in the bag three days, so that's kind of like shipping, it's kind of normal, so we didn't have to worry about it nearly as much. I mean, I still put them in an insulated bag in here and I carried extra bags and all that. But they all look pretty good. So now all I gotta do is basically get them in the tanks and figure out where they're gonna go. Ideally, I'd have that planned ahead, but uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five species of fish weren't planned. So I have plenty of room, but it's gonna take a little thinking where, okay, where's this gonna go best at? So hopefully this gave you an insight on how to move or just transport fish over a long period of time and some of the methods you might use. I know we didn't use any breather bags this time, but um, they're harder for a lot of hobbies to get a hold of anyway. But there's lots of options. Manage your options, manage the ammonia, use air stones, and uh, you know, plan accordingly. So good luck with the move.